Ladies and gentlemen, America's favorite muscle car is back in 2021 with a brand new generation. It needs no introduction, from that glorious V8 up front to that thunderous exhaust sound at the back, this new Mustang doesn't have any of that because this new one called the Mach-E is a four-door, four-wheel driven SUV. Now, you have to say that they did a pretty good job Mustangifying this SUV, right? I mean, it's just the side profile that doesn't match with the theme, but the front and especially the back, they really do look like they come from a Mustang. Now, before we jump back in and I tell you why I think this is a genius move from Ford, let me quickly walk you around this car and its specs. Now the design is what it is, it's a very subjective thing, so I'll let you guys decide if you like it or not. But other than that, it's got Mustang badges all around, you won't see any Ford badges on this car. It rides on 19 inch wheels, and do you notice those black accents on the side profile of the car? Notice how from far away it looks like it has this sleek profile, a very coupe-like shape. But as you move closer to the car, you notice that it is actually more square shaped than you think. And those details are just painted black so that the designers could actually hide the size of this car. Which is quite clever if you ask me, because people that see it on the street really do think it's more coupe shaped rather than a regular SUV shaped car. Anyway, in Sweden at least at the moment there's four versions of this car. First you have the standard range car equipped with a 75 kilowatt hour battery and a long range model equipped with a 90 kilowatt hour battery, right? And both of these two versions can be had either with rear wheel drive or with all wheel drive. Now the car I'm driving today is the long range all wheel drive model it's got every option you can fit, at least in Sweden, meaning a tech pack plus, which gets you a bunch of tech options, obviously, and this quite cool red color. This car can produce 350 horsepower in this spec, and it can accelerate from north to 100 kilometers per hour in 5.1 seconds. And this isn't even the performance version of the Mustang Mach-E, because the GT variant, as it's going to be called, is going to come later this year or maybe even next year. And yeah, 5.1 seconds to 100 km per hour is not bad at all, especially considering this car weighs 2.2 tons. Now, on the inside, except for this steering wheel right here, nothing on the dashboard will tell you that this is a Ford product. It's actually very well done, this interior. You have a small screen right in front of you here, behind the steering wheel, that tells you the speed you're traveling at, your range, your how many kilometers you've traveled, and so on. You get the gist. And then there's another one right behind the steering wheel, on the steering column, that's turned off, as you can see. And that's turned off because this is the autopilot screen or whatever Ford calls their autonomous driving system, right? And it's turned off because in Europe such systems are not allowed yet. So there you go. Now let's focus our attention on this screen over here. Does it remind you of any other car brand? No? Yeah. It doesn't remind me of Tesla either, so I'm with you on that one. But joking aside, this screen is quite good actually. My only complaint with it is that it's not very driver oriented and sometimes you have to go like this in order to properly see what's on it, but 
yeah, you kind of get used to it. I'm not going to bother you with details like going through the manuals and everything. You can do that yourself by going to the showrooms. But I will say it is a very good screen. It gets quite bright. The colors are accurate and the size is very good as well. I love the fact that you have a physical volume button. It's very well integrated. And another good thing is the fact that you have all the climate controls all the time on this screen you don't have to fiddle with menus in order to turn on your heated seats or turn the heat up or down so yeah i really like this and how it's integrated into the car but yeah other than that there's quite good quality materials on the inside and this interior feels very well put together So here's the range and the odometer I'll start with. I'm going to be driving the car around for three days and then at the end of the video I'm going to update you with how many kilometers I'll be able to do and how much battery I'll have left. Now on to what this car is like to drive. Well, it's pretty good. The driving position is quite high and from behind the steering wheel this car feels pretty big. Even the diameter of the steering wheel feels larger than usual. Now a lot of people have said that this car handles very well but I'm not very comfortable pushing it to the limit because there's quite a lot of body roll and these seats don't have any side bolsters to keep you in place. Also, this car doesn't have adaptive dampers, so when there's a lot of uneven bumps in the road, the car tends to bounce around quite a lot and to me at least, it feels a little underdamped. There's three driving modes on this car, Active, Whisper and Untamed, and all they do is they change the throttle response basically, the steering weight and how loud the sound generator that this car has is. So at this point you're probably wondering, is it fast? Well, as is the way with electric cars nowadays, yup, this one is pretty fast too. Performance wise, it's almost as fast as the V8 GT Mustangs but the throttle response is absolutely instant. As soon as you touch the throttle, the car just takes off without any delay. It would have been better if the throttle pedal wouldn't be as sensitive as it is right now because it tends to be quite jerky around town when you try to take off from a traffic light. I guess this is something you get used to over time, but for me in the three days I've spent with this car, yeah, it wasn't as refined around town as I would like it to be. Now let me explain why I think that what Ford did here is a stroke of genius. Now this is quite a good electric car. It's comfortable, it's good to drive, it's spacious, and it's got pretty much all the tech you would ever need. But where the genius part comes in is Ford actually calling it a Mustang. Think about it, people that loved and worshipped their Mustangs are now family folks with children. And as much as you want to, you can't really fit a family of four in a two-door Mustang. So even though folks loved their Mustang, they had to move on from their beloved muscle car. So what Ford is doing with this one is they're reaching out to their old audience again. Instead of cancelling it like they would have had to do, they're keeping the name alive and going with the times that we're living at the moment. Most people that drove Mustangs in the 60s, 70s and even 80s will be quite happy to drive around in a large family SUV with a Mustang badge on it. I mean, it brings back memories. It reminds them of what it was back in the day. And I think this marketing idea will be a gold mine for Ford. I've been very lucky with this YouTube channel to be able to drive quite a lot of fantastic cars, but none 
have generated the amount of attention that this one does. I have a Lexus LC500 convertible in my driveway waiting for me to review it, but my neighbors couldn't care less. But when I drove in with this one, they immediately started asking questions about it, and that's all down to the badge that this car is wearing that they recognized. And the same happened to me when I was out in the forest with this car, filming it for this video. People stopped their cars and asked about it. In Sweden, the Mach-E starts from 56,000 euros for the rear-wheel driven standard range car and it goes all the way to 76,000 euros what the car I'm driving today costs. And if you ask me, that's very good value for money. For that cash minus whatever government grants your country has when you purchase an electric car, you get a lot of car for the money. There are a few niggles however. The doors for instance, there's no door handles and to open them you have to press a button which in turn triggers a mechanism that pushes the door out. I'm not sure why they didn't go for the traditional way of opening a door as I'm not really sure how the system would handle the test of time. But I guess we'll have to see. Then there's the luggage space. It's not that great to be honest. For such a big car I was expecting more, especially since it's an electric car and it has a trunk and a frunk. And finally, for this money I'd expect the car to have adaptive dampers. Or at least to be able to choose that from an options list. It's just something most cars have nowadays and I think it's something that the Mach-E needs. So here are the final numbers if you're interested in an actual range of this car. So as you can see I've done around 170 kilometers and I have 47% of the battery left. So yeah quite a bit far off from the official numbers but I think if you're careful you can actually go around 400 kilometers with this car but as you can imagine, I also drove it a bit harder because I wanted to test the dynamics and the handling of the car. And yeah, that's not what most people do. So yeah, there you go. So there you go. This has been my test with the new Mustang Mach-E. I don't really test electric cars on this channel. This is not what this YouTube channel is about. It's more about performance cars and sports cars but this is a Mustang at the end of the day at least that's what it's called so I wanted to see what the generation is like. Let me know what you think about this car in the comment section down below and please don't forget to give a thumbs up on this video and make sure you're subscribed for plenty more videos to come.